Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Let's go over the nine game MLB DFS slate for today on DraftKings. But before we continue, as always, if you guys could just leave a like, and if you're new to the channel, you might as well hit that subscribe button. Remember, all season long, trying to help you guys become better MLB DFS players. And yes, I know the season is just about over, but I do cover other sports as well. So if you're going to come back to the channel each and every single day or each and every single week, you might as well hit that subscribe button and turn the notification bell so you don't miss out whenever I post new videos. And if you're going to follow me on social media, my handles are in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. And if you're going to my content over on Patreon, always much appreciated. We got over 300 people. You can hop into the Discord chat. I'm just get access to all the extra content that I put out each and every single day or each and every single week, depending on the sport. So if you're interested, links down below. If not, that's fine. Let's just dive into today's slate. So the pitching on the slate, I actually think is a good idea to probably go up for two spend up options in Jacob DeGrom and Garrett Cole. And there's plenty of value to get it done. I did throw McCullers and Singer on here as more mid-range and value options, but I actually think this is a good slate to double spend up for your aces. We had two of some of the best pitchers in all of baseball in Jacob DeGrom and Garrett Cole, and they're also kind of underpriced to be honest. I think DeGrom could be over 11k and Garrett Cole should be close to 11k, so we're getting good prices on these guys. There's plenty of value bats that I like in good spots as well. So I'm thinking it's a good day to go double spend up at the on the aces. And last night's slate, I want to mention that really quick. That was a pretty wild slate. I actually had a Jack Flaherty with an ace stack in cash games. And I still did well, <laughs> thanks to Cole Calhoun, which was kind of crazy. He was also very high on two. It was a very, very chalky night, which kind of made up for the ace sucking Jack Flaherty because I believe he was the highest owned pitcher on the slate and the A's were super chalk and they scored one run in Coors Field. But all thanks to Cole Calhoun, so I'm hoping you guys had him. <laughs> He's, he was the saving grace for last night. But anyway, let's just get into this. So Jacob DeGrom, 10,400. Matchup versus Philly isn't great, but he's one of the best pitchers in baseball. His numbers are absolutely insane once again this season. He's got a really shiny 1.67 ERA paired with a really good 2.44 XFIP, a near 40% carry, elite control at 6% walk rate, hard contact rates at 35%, and about half a home run per nine innings. And in the matchup versus Philly, Again, it's not great. I mean, they don't really strike out much, and they got good numbers overall, but it's Jacob deGrom, and he can overpower any single lineup that he faces. And he actually faced Philly a couple of starts ago, and he had 38.8 DraftKings points, which is the second best game of the season, just DK points-wise, and he struck out 12, and he had... He's over 100 pitches in almost every single start. So Jake DeGrom, he is our ace of the slate. And it's not that hard to fit in both him and Garrett Cole today. And that's my plan as of right now. Because there's no course field that we need to, like, just absolutely have to, like, you don't have to feel the need to spend up for big bats. And there's plenty of value. So definitely like the double spend up options. Garrett Cole, 9900 I just like the price tag, to be honest. Like, I'm not sure why he's not above 10 k It's kind of weird. And he's coming off a fantastic start versus Baltimore, where he scored 41 DraftKings points, striking out nine. And then in his last start, it was versus Baltimore again, and he scored nearly 30 DraftKings points, striking out 10. So, really 9,900, not sure what the price is all about, but I have a ton of interest in Garrett Cole, I guess, as SP2 today. I mean, he's an ace SP1, but given the slate, I like Jacob DeGrom the most. He's the most expensive, then I like Garrett Cole the second most. He's 9,900, and I think we can certainly pair both together. These guys each have 40-point upside, and if you can lock in, like, like. 50 to 80 points from your pitchers, I will take that, and the value bats are pretty strong on this slate, so definitely like the double spend-up options. If we're looking at Cole's numbers this season, I mean, the Blue Jays only have a 3.2 implied team total. He's a very heavy favorite here, 71% chance for the win, and 8.5 strikeouts over in Vegas. He's got a 33% carry this season, which is down from 40% last season, but still overall very good numbers. Now, his only glaring issue this season is the home runs. Like, It's pretty much a given he's going to get a home, give up a home run every single start this season. He's given up nearly two home runs per nine innings, which is not great at all, but it comes with the strikeouts, and he's still an elite pitcher, so I think Eric Cole is obviously a fine option here, and he's my preferred SP2 on this slate, as crazy as that sounds. And then these guys, I really wouldn't recommend them in cash games for the most part, but they're fine in tournaments if you want to say you want to stack the Braves because they are pretty expensive. I don't think you have to stack the Braves today, but they're fine as a GPP stack, and you're not going to be able to stack them up if you are using both DeGrom and Garrett Cole. So if you want to go with McCullers or Singer, I think they're okay. They get some decent matchups. Now, McCullers, he's coming off the IEL, so I'm not sure how deep he's going to go into the game. But this is a good matchup, and we just saw, I think it's, is it Urgidi? Urgidi? <laughs> I still don't know how to pronounce his name. I know someone uh, told me how to pronounce it, but I was kind of still confused. But he had a great game last night. He scored 29 points, and if he can do that, I think McCullers can have a decent outing. I know he's not having a great season in the slightest. 4.37 XFIP with a 20% carry and a double-digit walk rate, but he's getting a lot of ground balls, not giving up many homers either. 
And the Rangers just absolutely suck versus right-handed pitching and just really just in general this season. They have a 61 WRC+, plus, a 202 batting average, and a 124 team ISO. So McCullers is fine. I'm just not sure how deep he's going to go into this game. I have not seen anything definitive on a pitch count, so I'll have to see. But this is a very, very pristine matchup for him, and he's fairly priced as well. And then Brady Singer, 62 under. He is coming off an absolute monster performance. I believe he scored, what, over 30 fantasy points in his last start? I can double-check that really quick. But he gets a pretty good matchup here versus Detroit, who is striking out quite a bit versus Rice this season. Yeah, okay, I just looked it up. Versus Cleveland, he scored 36.2 DraftKings points, went 8 innings, 119 pitches, and 8 strikeouts. So, only allowed one hit as well with 2 walks. Not going to expect that every single time out. But Detroit, they do have some power this season. They're not an awful team, but they're striking out still quite a bit versus Rice. If you're looking at their splits... 28.6% K rate, 7% walk rate. They got some okay pop. 304 Woba, 180 ISO, NWRC Plus. It's not horrendous, but it's still pretty favorable to right-handed pitchers. And at only 6,200, you're pretty much only using him if you want to load in guys like Freddie Freeman, Travis Darno, Acuna, Marcelo Zuno, those guys. But I don't think it's a necessity for cash games to fit those guys in. And I would much prefer to get the double aces in for cash games. And at this point, we'll move on to the bats. And up top, speaking of some Braves, we have Travis Darno at 4600 Braves are going to be the top team on this slate, but that does come with a pretty expensive price tag. I do not think these guys are necessary in cash games, but if you can get to them, I have no issues with that at all. Now, if you're looking at Darno's splits versus lefties this season, it's been pretty awful, but, I mean, he's still a fine hitter, one of the best... One of the better hitter catch, hitting catchers in the league, and he's on the best offense of the slate going up against a lefty. Now, Aiken has not been bad this season, but he has struggled with righties. I believe he's only got a 15% K rate to righties and allowing over a 400 Woba. So we can certainly certainly use the righties here. We're also in a very hitter-friendly park in Baltimore, so I do like the Braves, and I always prefer righties, but I still like Freddie Freeman too. Then Pedro Severino, 3,800 going up against lefty Cole Hamels, who I believe is going to be on a pitch count today. But I do like him versus lefties if you're looking at his splits versus them this season. 20% walk rate with a 600 slugging and a 350 ISO with over a 400 Wobos. So he's fine at catcher, but for the most part, just fill in whoever fits in at the end at catcher because it's really not that important of a position. And then a guy who's kind of been on fire, Dalton Varsho here at 3,300. Now, I don't really like using guys versus Bundy, but man, these Diamondbacks are pretty cheap, so it is pretty enticing. And I wanted to list a lot more just because of the price tags, but I kind of shied away from it just because Bundy's pretty good. He's coming off of like a nearly 40 draft, 40 DK point outing, but he's a pretty good pitcher, but I don't mind Varsho here. He's been pretty good versus righties this season with over a 260 ISO, 441 slugging, very low batting average, but he's been swinging a hot bat recently. If you're looking at the game log, he's been doing well. So I think Varsho is fine. If you can't get up to Varsho, Vars Severino, or Darno, just fill in whoever fits at the end. I think Carson Kelly's cheap and he'd be a fine punt option. Then going down to first base, we have Freddie Freeman at 5,700. Prefer the righties here versus Aiken, but Freddie Freeman's one of the best hitters in the league. And he's fine versus lefties. You know, he's much better versus righties in this season versus lefties. He's kind of been struggling a bit. <laughs> Less than 100 ISO and just overall pretty weak numbers. But I like this offense as a whole. They'll probably get to the bullpen soon enough, and Freeman's fine if you are stacking Braves. But you definitely don't have to pay 5,700 for Freeman versus a lefty in cash games today. Carlos Santana, 3,500. There is no team to allow yet for this Cubs game. I'm assuming they're waiting on the wind. As of right now, it looks like it's blowing across the field, so it isn't really gonna, it's not really going to make too much of a difference for pitching or bats. But Santana's been very good versus lefties this season, and we know John Lester is someone that will struggle versus versus right-handed pitching. Sorry, I just fixed something. If you saw me pause that, I had uh, Severino's a lefty, and I didn't have anything for, Joe, uh, for Varsho. Severino's a right-handed bat, and Varsho is a lefty, just in case I know I was wondering. But anyway, Santana, he's fine. He's been hitting lefties well this season. And if you're looking at his splits, 442 slugging, 256 batting average, 26 ice. So I say he's been hitting them well, but for his price tag, he's been fine. Getting a lot of ground balls, though, which kind of sucks. But he's a guy that's going to walk a lot and doesn't really strike out too much. And then Renato Nunez here at 3,700. I don't mind an Orioles stack here versus Cole Hamels, although I'm not really going to come here and tout the O's. But I think some of these guys are Decent plays at fair price points. And Nunez, he's a guy with some pop. He will strike out quite a bit, but he's okay. He's a cheaper righty here versus Cole Hamels. And then going down to second base, not the I wouldn't say it's the best position, but there's actually three guys that kind of stand out the most to me. Now, you can also use Whit Merrifield. If, I think he's like 5,400, which I don't really want to do that, but these guys are okay. I mean, Ozzy Albee, Ozzy Albee, they always have trouble saying his name quick, but at 4,500, I like all the Braves. I think he's a... 
he's a fine option, and if you're looking at the splits the past couple of seasons, he's been much better versus left-handed pitching, so I think he's totally fine, even though he's at the bottom of the order. Hanser Alberto at 3,900. Uh, last year, he was great versus lefties, and he's continuing that trend once again. Like He's got some pretty good numbers versus them this season with a 429 batting average, over a 600 slugging, a 179 ISO, and a 185 WRC+, plus, and over a 440 WOBA. So definitely don't mind Alberto leading off versus Cole Hamels. Then Jose Altuve, 3400 His price fell off a cliff. I didn't, I guess I didn't really notice his price last night, but before yesterday, his he was constantly in the 5K range, and they just put his price off a cliff. I think he was at 3700 last night. Now he's all the way down to 3400 And the Astros, I would say, were one of the better teams to use on this slate, and you can get some good price points on these guys. So I definitely like Jose Altuve. Let me hear at the top of the order now. I know he's not having a very good season at all, <laughs> but at 3400 with a team total of 5.42, I'm going to be interested here. Now, again, his numbers are pretty bad. 245 batting average, a ton of ground balls, and doesn't is not really getting the ball in the air, and just overall very bad numbers. But at 3400 he's fine, especially because I do like the Astros on this slate versus a pretty average pitcher in Kyle Gibson. Anthony Rendon going down to third base. Super expensive, but he's facing a lefty in Caleb Smith. Now, Caleb Smith is not a bad pitcher, but he walks a lot of guys, and he allows a ton of fly balls and hard contact, and I mean, there's a decent chance Anthony Rendon could go deep here. I wouldn't say I love the Angels. They got a team total of 5.14, which is fine, but a lot of these guys are pretty expensive, and I don't really think it's worth the team total too much, but, I mean, anytime Rendon's facing a lefty, he's going to be viable. Over a 300 ISO, 400 Woba, just overall very good numbers. So if you like Rendon versus lefties, which you should, I think he's fine if you got the money for him. Jose Ramirez at 5,400. He's been hitting lefties very, very well this season. Last year, he was a little bit better versus the righties that kind of switched so far this season. But a, a 452 ISO, a 487 Woba, 786 slugging, a 333 batting average. He has been crushing lefties. So I think he's a fine option here as a lefty or as a righty versus John Lester. And then Alex Bregman, 4,800. If you want to save a couple of bucks, he's just part of that Astro stack that I have interest in. I always prefer him better versus lefties, but he's okay versus righties, although the batting average is only at 200 this season versus them, but he's still fine. He is still fine. Then Austin Riley at 4,000, actually one of the cheaper Braves at 4,000. A lot of these guys are just insanely priced, but Riley's fine at 4K. He's got some okay pop versus lefties. Keeps the ball in the air, only a 15% ground ball rate to lefties and a 44% fly ball rate, which is actually pretty extreme. So I think he's fine. You could get a cheap home run in Austin Riley versus Aiken here. Then going on a shortstop, not many options I liked. I think it's pretty much between Dansby Swanson and Adalberto Mondesi. You could also look at Francisco Lindor as well, but I do prefer him versus right-handed pitching. But Swanson here versus lefty, he's fine. Now, if we're looking at his numbers this season, he's actually been a bit better versus the righties than he has versus the lefties. But I like all the righties and the Braves here versus Aiken. So Dansby Swanson, if you got the money for him, is a good option. But Adam Redmond to see at 3,900. This is probably where I'm going to end up. He's been swinging a hot bat. He's hitting near the top of the order. He's only 3,900. And he's been pretty good versus lefties this season. Very high ground ball rate, but a 576 slugging, 273 batting average, and over a 300 ISO to lefties. So I think Montessi is a pretty easy play at shortstop today, especially in cash games. We're probably going to have to save a couple of bucks because we're going to be spending up for the double aces more than likely. So I think Montessi is an excellent option there. And dropping down to the outfield. If you got the money for him, which I doubt you're going to, but at 6,300, Mike Trout, I mean, Mike Trout's always going to be nearly the top player on the entire slate, no matter who he's facing. He's been much better versus righties this season. So I'm not too excited about going up against a lefty, but it is Mike Trout, the best player in baseball. But the numbers are a little concerning, to be honest, versus lefties this season. Got a 32% K rate. Yeah, 175 ISO and only a 225 batting average. So the numbers versus righties are just godlike. That's what Mike Trout is. But numbers are a bit down versus lefties this season. So I definitely don't think you have to spend top dollar for him. But it is Mike Trout. So if you got the money for him, he's fine. But I would prefer Acuna at 5,900 just because I like the Braves overall better. But, I mean, both are okay options. And kind of like Mike Trout, Acuna is crushing righties this year, but he is struggling a bit versus lefties with a 177 batting average and a 26% carry. But overall, I do like the Braves lineup better, so I would say with Acuna, but both are obviously two of the better hitters in all of baseball. Marcelo Zuna, 4,700. He's crushing lefties this season. Looking at his splits, he's had no issue with them at all. A 645 ISO, over 1,000 slugging, a 20% walk rate, and a 595 Woba. So definitely love Ozuna. I think he's an excellent option there. Adam Duvall, 4,300, king of the triple dong. If you're looking at his numbers versus lefties this season, kind of like Austin Riley. He's got a huge fly ball rate, like 51% fly ball rate. Austin Riley's at 44%. So these guys are getting the ball in the air, which... I like because that's a good chance of homers, especially if they've got some power. And Adam Duvall certainly has got some power with a 265 ISO this season. 
Strikes out a ton and has horrible plate discipline with only a 2% walk rate, but get the ball in the air versus Aiken, maybe we can get a somewhat cheap home run. And then going out of Framel Reyes at 4,200, better versus righties, but I do prefer I do prefer uh, righties versus John Lester, so I think he's fine, even though he's only got a .059 ISO versus left-handed pitching this season, but a near 300 batting average, so I think Framel Reyes is decent at 4,200. Kyle Tucker at 4,200, just part of the Astros stack that I think is pretty strong on this slate. They have a team total of nearly 5.5, and, and if you're looking at Tucker splits versus righties this season, He's got a 292 ISO with a 134 WRC plus and a 274 batting average. Does strike out quite a bit, but I think at 4,200, he's certainly viable. Hunter Dozier at 4,000 versus Scooble. He's crushing lefties this year. It's a little bit of a smaller sample size, but 333 ISO, 785 Woba, 419 WRC plus over 1,100 slugging, and a 778 batting average. Again, it's a smaller sample size, but he has been good versus lefties, and Hunter Dozier is a pretty solid bet anyway, so. I think him with Merrifield and Adoreto Mondesi, and even Franco make a decent Royal stack on this slate, and you could also throw in Salvador Perez as well, even though their team total is only 4.44, but I think they're a decent stack in tournaments. Then Cole Calhoun, 3,800. I don't really want to use guys versus Dylan Bundy, but from what he did last night, I had to put him on here just because he scored nearly 40 DraftKings points, and you know, I forgot that he was making uh, his return in Los Angeles. So you got a bit of the revenge narrative as well. I should have mentioned that yesterday. But anyway, Cole Calhoun, he's had decent power versus righties this season. And when I say decent, I mean good power over a 300 ISO, 133 WRC+. Plus, and just overall, very good number. So I'm on Calhoun at 3,800, even though this is a tough matchup versus Dylan Bundy. Uh, Michael Brantley, 3,300. I think he's a pretty solid safe cash option at 3,300. I mean, he's probably one of the safer options on the entire slate. Probably going to end up being decently high owned as well. But batting third, only 3,300. He's just mispriced. He said good numbers this season versus righties, 337 batting average. Striker rate's higher than it was last year, but overall still Michael Brantley numbers. You get some decent power with a high batting average. So I think Brantley's fine at 3,300. Jordan Lupo, he is dirt cheap at 2,200 facing a lefty. Now, if you're looking at his numbers last season versus lefties, he had like J.D. Martinez-like numbers. Like the guy was just absolutely insane. He had like over a 400 ice zone. Just oh, very good numbers. This year, not really the case. <laughs> 0.083 ISO, but a 250 batting average and only a 7% carry. He's making contact. I like righties versus John Lester. In only 2,200, we're not asking for too much. He could get a cheap homer here. Then Willie Calhoun, he is the bare minimum, and he's batting second. And I know the Rangers just kind of suck this season, and really overall, Calhoun's not been great versus righties. But he's only got a 14% carry, so maybe we'll get some cheap contact here at 2,000. Hopefully, you don't have to go this deep, but I think he's okay at the bare minimum. But that's going to be it for the video, guys. I hope it was helpful. If it was, make sure you leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. I really do appreciate it. Check out my NFL content if you choose, if you feel like you want to. And I'll have my NASCAR content hopefully up tomorrow or maybe tonight, but probably tomorrow. But I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next one.